This is Amazon's cheapest tire cutter. This is a constant problem. This tire tube will hopefully be a solution. And this is a rusted out scissor jack. We're using all of them. I promise you, we're not using this the way you think we're gonna. Fancy intro here. It'd be a good spot for one, but I don't have one. This is a John Deere 755. It's a 20 horse tractor, 15 horse PTO output. I absolutely love this thing. We've done several things to this over the year. We have some remote hydraulics or some extra hydraulics there. Neil Kof from Neil Kof Dig Drive DIY, and this fell right here. He added this quick attach on here for me. And one thing I've always wanted to do is upgrade the tires on here. I would love to upgrade to some R14s. I think R4 tires are a scam, I truly believe that. And R1s are a little too aggressive for what we do. And I don't wanna mess with tire chains because I'm on and off the road all the time with this thing. We just do everything with it. So I don't wanna take them on and off all the time. And R14 is a fantastic combination tire. Tractor Time with Tim has some great videos on it, by the way. Actually, several channels have good videos on R14s. But last time I priced a set of R14s, just for the two front tires 350 bucks and despite these nice goodwill threads that i always do for my over shirts i'm not made of money you would think i am but i'm just not we're gonna take this fancy tool and just kind of try to make this a little bit more aggressive and i cannot wait to try this trick out no oh, easy bud Now I have done lots of tires for Dirt Perfect. Semi tires, regular automotive tires for myself, four wheeler tires, and I've done some tractor tires before. And I found that the smaller the wheel, the more difficult it is. And I've never done tubes before, so this will be a first for me on the tubes. But first thing we're gonna do, this valve stem we won't be using anymore. Obviously the tube has its own little built-in valve stem there. We are gonna wanna get the air out of here. There's a couple ways to do it. They make little valve stem tools, which you can get anywhere. They're super cheap on Amazon. Most slime bottles, like green slime bottles, they come. The cap has a little valve stem tool. Uh, if you want, you can just poke that in there too and let some of that air pressure out. And then if you want, you can also just, which we're gonna do, go ahead and just rip the valve stem out. Next thing I wanna do is go ahead and break this bead. Now normally if I'm doing like my four wheeler tires or my tires here at the house for my cars or trucks, I just use the back of our forks on the tractor, but this is where we're at now. That's where this feller's gonna come in. She's a little, oh, that doesn't fit in there. Rusted up right now. Oh, she's a lot rusted up right now. Um, yep. Well, let's beat her with a hammer and see what happens. Let's give her a few few of those. There's basically a piece of all thread that runs from there to there. And it's probably seized up on both ends. I want to, uh, I just had this nut laying back there. I want to take this nut and see if we can't get it welded on here. I got an idea. And we'll just flap wheel up a little bit. Toasty, so don't touch her right now. But let's see if uh, see if a little impact action will help break her loose. There, Keep moving now. We'll add a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of lube on there and we'll run her into that a few times.
The only issue is my net's a little bit off center, so she's a little wonky and wobbly, but you know that's not that's not gonna hurt anything. Now they do make slide hammers, obviously, they make lots of tools to break beats with. Oh, we might be a little, a little tall here. But I just thought this looked like a pretty slick method. I thought we might try it real quick. So obviously you can kind of see what the goal is. The tire might get wonky on us. We're just we're playing around. We're just kind of having fun right now. See what this does. She's off the beat on that side. Hot. Oh, that's still hot. Oh, she's off the beat all the way around. I don't know. That's kind of slick. What I've seen, what I've seen some people do on the internet is they'll put like a piece of tubing or metal on the bottom that kind of rides around like that. Gives them a little bit of height. Hey, hey, dinner, bud, some rocks, huh? But, uh, you know, if that's what you got to break beads with, looks like it does the trick. There we go. Now you can see. There's just, oh, I almost just need to take this whole thing over to the house and pressure wash it. There's all kinds of mud and gunk and stuff on the inside of that tire. Beautiful. I'm thinking about sliding the tire out this way putting it on like this and then I can kneel on this side over here to keep this tire from flipping up. Almost. Um, what if we just put it right on the tire? Huh? What if we just put the jack right on the tire? I think it works better with just the jack and that end is still hot. We gotta stop touching it. But maybe like welding something on there, kind of the shape of a tire or something that puts a little bit more down pressure right there on the bead, not on the sidewall. Might uh, might be the ticket, but I'm pretty tickled with it. Pretty slick trick. And I forgot I drained the gas out of the pressure washer. So it just ran on what was in the carburetor and fuel line for a little bit. And I'm too lazy to go to the gas station today. But we did get the inside all cleaned up. I don't know if you're able to see it. The inside's all cleaned up in there, all that mud's gone, so that is good. And then I just pulled one part of the bead over with my halligan and was able to drain all the water out of there. There's the valve stem, there's the valve stem hole. I'm gonna to try to keep it close. I imagine it'd be quite a bear to get this thing spun on there. And I've never seen anybody actually be able to slide it in from one side like that. It seems like it's always kind of a struggle bus, but we're gonna try that, because I, I kind of wanna know for myself. Soapy water is going to be my friend. And a whole bunch of it. I don't think there's any reason to be stingy with it. How's that valve stem supposed to go? Oh, it's supposed to go like this. Wait. Is there a left and a right? Hold on a second. Honestly, not too bad as long as we keep her soaked up. So far, it's not too bad anyway. Just shoving her down in there. Just 
just really try to make sure I don't rip anything on this edge too, which shouldn't be too sharp anyway. But everything's sliding pretty good for me. Well, I say let's put a little air in it and see what it see if it does what it's supposed to. Still gonna hold on to that just just a bit here. We are clear of the bead all the way around, right? We are, yes, okay. I'm gonna try to pull this tube out. For some reason it's twisting on me. It's laying good and flat all the way around, except for one spot right at the valve stem, which makes me think, I know they're directional, but I thought I had it the right direction, but the way it's acting makes me think that I don't have it the right direction. And to get that tube off, we're just we're gonna go ahead and have to probably just go ahead and pull this well without getting into the tube. Alright, I'm hoping I can get in there. Start working this thing out. got this on here so it's letting air out while I'm pulling it. Uh, round two. So I got it back in there. It's tucked. Everything's below the bead. Everything looks good. I'm just going to fill it until it's supposed to be at the correct pressure. Maybe it's got to fill the space and push out to actually hold it. It does seem to be in there a little bit nicer this time though. Tube should push this tire up on that bead. There it went over there. No problem that round. Everything's sealed up fine. Tire feels good. Valve stem sitting nice and pretty. I guess they are directional. I'll pay attention to that on the next one. Lessons learned, right? So I believe I put this blue line to the outside on that one. So we're going to do the same thing on this one. This thing is down below. Let's see what this one does. So yeah, same thing. We're just trying to pull that valve stem back down in there. I'm not 100% sure why that keeps happening. All right, so you see this double line compared to where there's single lines. I'd take this one out and redo it too. What I think I've learned is that double line, I think there's a specific part of this tube that is supposed to ride right around there where that valve stem comes out. And I think I've been putting the wrong part of the tube. Had it oriented wrong? I don't know. Had it in there wrong. However you want to say it, you can use the word you want to use. But I think that's the problem. We're getting ready to find out. And you can, if you're wondering, you can take these to a tire shop and for a pretty affordable price, they will uh, do this for you. But I just kind of wanted to try it on my own. I've never done tubes before. Uh, I do believe I will take it to the tire shop next time. But now we know, and if we ever have to do this on a day where the tire shop's closed, we've got a little bit of experience with it. And we should be able to get her done. You can't learn something if you don't ever try it. There you go. First time doing tubes. It took me about two hours all in all, even with having to do both of them twice. So I guess I could do four tires in two hours. Now that I know a little bit about what I'm doing, you definitely have to pay attention to where that valve stem is and how that's oriented. So there's a tip for you. Don't know if you learned anything, but I learned some things. Like I said, Tire shop's probably your best bet. Let's try this fancy tread doctor. New traction on worn tires. Very nice. Ooh, it's got the sniper kit. Fancy. Easily pays for itself with just one tire. Now that's a bargain. 
very save time and money. Well, that's the goal. Let's see what we got here. I just love this work. This is like sometimes when the river comes up and goes down, we walk the banks and try to find things. Can you guess where this chair came from? Yeah, the river. That's just, <laughs> whatever. Actually, pretty heavy cord. Just got a blade on there right now. Looks like you can, uh, there's a Phillips screw there. Looks like you could back that out and change tips. So there are no settings on this. It's just on or off. The biggest thing I saw when I watched some videos on it was uh, to let it heat up really good before you start taking off with it. So we're gonna turn her on. While that's getting warmed up, I had another subscriber when I was talking about cutting tires. They said, why don't you try an oscillating tool blade on it. They've used that and it works fairly well. well. I'm willing to try that for science real quick. Let's try it out. It actually works pretty good. I need to uh, I need to trim this so it can fit between the knobs here. Probably just use the grinder real quick. Let's see how this thing does now that it's kind of somewhat warmed up. Uh, that's that's a whole heck of a lot of effort. I don't know if that's the heat or just the sharpness of the blade. Let it warm up a little bit more. up by now. Let that warm up a little bit longer. I'm all the way around both sides like that. So I was gonna kind of try to do like a staggered pattern, but I'm having a hard time getting a clean cut like that. So I think instead I'm just gonna run two in. We'll leave that full center row. And I'll just come in kind of like that. Here's what we ended up with on this one. And I don't hate that. I think it's definitely gonna be a little bit better than what we had. 
So I tried to stay kind of high, not actually get in the actual tire itself. I think we did pretty good. Use that oscillating tool for pretty much all of it, but it does have a downfall, that oscillating tool. I'll show you when we get to that other tire. That only took like, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes to go all the way around that. And that's messing with the two things, kind of figuring out which one I like better. So let me, uh, let me get started the outer row on this one. And I'll show you the issue I am having with this, where if that thing actually ever heated up right, I think would have the advantage. So as far as speed and effort, this oscillating tool, just a little straight razor blade on there, has been the ticket. But there are places that that heated knife I keep having to use, and I'll try to do it one-handed and show you. But as I come across these, I'm having a hard time controlling the up and down the knife, mainly because the blade that's on there is fairly flexible keeps wanting to dig down into the tire and I keep having to use that to finish it. Because with this, I've got control, right? I got a lever, I can pull up, push down, I got control with it. Let me try to show you. See how that one's trying to dive down on me? can't get it to come back up. I don't want to go down into the actual tire surface itself, but with this, because it's a big lever, I can pull up as I push. It keeps me from going too deep. That is not the worst looking tread pattern I've ever seen. Not too bad at all. I think that's gonna be a big improvement for us and still give us a good comfortable ride. Like I'm still not gonna tear my yard up like crazy. I'm still gonna be able to drive down a gravel road without bouncing like if I had chains or something on it. I think that's gonna be a big improvement. Oscillating tool with the blade, way faster. Absolutely love it. The heated knife, Definitely a little bit more control. I mean, you guys saw it. You can make up your own mind if you want to do something like this. Definitely cheaper than buying new tires. Don't get me wrong. These tires are on their way out, especially that one on the other side. It's all dry rotten and half the tread's gone. And at some point, we'll, some point we'll have to find the money to get some, but with all the other projects, it's just not here right now. This should definitely get us by and save us a little bit of time. And as far as the tubes go, I don't think I've used this tractor without putting air in the tires for probably the last three, four years, so it's gonna be nice to be able to just hop on the thing. But before we can, and sticking with the theme of saving time, you guys remember, notice this winter, which it's still winter, but uh, we had some pretty rough cold starts. I got three new glow plugs. They came in a set of three, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change all three. Gotta take our filter box off, whatever you wanna call it. Should just pull out of here. Yep. Cheat, he's adjustable. Somebody's gonna be mad we're doing this with the battery hooked up. That's okay. People get mad at you. Doesn't mean they have any control over you. We are one, two, three. Right there. We'll do these electrical connections first. I'm gonna clean this out fairly decent too. We don't want anything falling down inside there.
Just gonna compare them and make sure they look similar in length. You don't want something too crazy long bouncing off the top cylinder. That wouldn't be great, would it? Anywho, there we go. Like I said, I got three new ones. We'll take three old ones out. If you're unfamiliar, these are called glow plugs. They do exactly what they say they do. They uh, heat up super hot and just kind of, it's like your pre-warmer to get the diesel engine kind of pre-warmed, your cylinders pre-warmed before you start turning the key. Get you a little bit extra heat in those colder temperatures. crooked but hopefully we'll be all right here there go. go ahead and clean those contacts off on there see if we can get these repositioned repositioned You might know where that ratchet just went. It fell somewhere. I feel like this. I feel like it fell in a place we're never getting it back to, didn't it? Oh yeah, we're not getting that. Oh, my hands can't get in there. I wonder if you guys are long enough to reach that thing. Oh, you're sticking to the wrong thing. Hold on. Hold on, you got something here. fellas so this contact here then goes on top if you got a magnetic socket great if not if you kind of half start it on something else you can use that to line it up and hold it and you can just thread it from one on to the other works like that if I fell a felt inclined you could hook these up and test them before you put them in. You would uh, want to ground it. It's grounded to the engine block and then a positive here, and you could see if they're actually working or not. Could have done that with the new ones too if a fellow wanted. You also could have pulled those out, hooked it up with the new ones, and made sure that the actually wiring worked. But you get what you get. We're going to flip the key, make sure nothing blows up. Nothing blew up. That's great. Any tips on rebuilding these Donaldson gauges would be handy it shows that we're not getting good airflow but we are it's, it's got new filters and everything in it i even went through and cleaned this little screen that it screws onto i'm assuming these things can just go bad at some point but it just i don't know i don't know they're surprisingly they're surprisingly expensive Just out of curiosity's sake. Let's see if these do anything. That one doesn't look to be doing anything. That one works. Oh gosh. Uh, one of them worked. We'll uh, we'll save that one. Looking like one out of the three was working. So there you go. Only one out of the three was working anyway. We'll save that one good one. That way I got something to throw out, throw out of the barn in a few years. It's always good to keep a stockpile of stuff you're never going to use. And uh, See if we can't do a fuel filter real quick. Love these old 55s because the panel just comes off. It just comes off. That's so great. A lot of moisture on this lawn, which is slightly suspicious. I've been having some priming issues. Not really priming issues. It just takes it a little bit to catch up with the fuel, or the fuel to catch up with the engine. And I'm wondering if we don't have a crack or a leak somewhere on the filter housing itself. 
All the lines are dry. We don't have any issues there. Well, I bet that's my fuel problem. Right here. I'm guessing... Well, I'm guessing that's not supposed to come out of there. Would be my guess. I'm guessing that should not come out. Which is probably why I'm pulling air for every now and then. And if it does come out, there's probably supposed to be an O-ring or something right in there. There's just no way that that's just supposed to ride in there like that. I mean, maybe it is. But if it is, I'm missing an O-ring for sure. I gotta do some research on that. New tubes, cut tires, new plugs, and I think we found our fuel problem. Man, I think those tires look pretty dang sharp too. This thing is supposed to be a tool that saves me time, not something that turns into a project every time I use it. Hopefully no more issues with low tires, hopefully no more issues with cold starts, and hopefully no more issues with wet leaves. I think we're gonna be time ahead. It's been difficult for me to do things like this. It's just so easy to throw air in it or just crank and crank and crank until it starts whenever it's cold. But doing what we did today, taking a day to get ahead like this will save us a bunch of time in the long run. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the channel. You wanna see if those tires work out for us? Stay tuned. We'll be using this tractor real soon back out at my brother's place where he's got that abandoned hunting cabin we're, we're picking up. Hopefully no nails through the new tubes though. That's, that's not gonna be great. And if you do have a 755 or any of the 55 series tractors and you know anything about that filter housing, specifically if you own one not like if you think something if you own one and you know and you've had to replace yours is that what i got going on there or do i just need an o-ring to push in there i'll check it out online too but hopefully with us combined we can get it figured out i do appreciate you watching we'll catch you on the next one